Hello, everybody. Today, I would like to talk about the serve. Uh, the serve starts every tennis point. Every many people say that serve is easy to practice because it's the only shot that doesn't depend on your opponent. That's definitely true. But also, serve is extremely hard. It's one of the most difficult shots to master, from loading to trophy pose, to hit, to contact point, to finish. A good serve will involve almost all the joints and muscles in your body. There are two main reasons for a serve to be difficult. One is called timing. The other is coordination. Timing means you have to hit the ball at the exact moment. And coordination means you have to coordinate all the parts of your body to finish a fluid motion. So today, I would like to talk about a critical part of the serve, which is from the trophy pose until you hit the ball, how to have a fluid motion with a deep racket drop. Um, let's start from the trophy pose. So we all know that we need to achieve the trophy pose, uh, no matter what your take back is. You could have a delayed take back, a very compact take back, but you need to achieve the trophy pose. The trophy pose has three characteristics. One is that your chest should be facing away from the net. Right? Basically, you need to turn your upper body. Second is that your shoulder the left shoulder should be higher than your right shoulder for a right hand player. Third is that your chest should be facing up. And finally, your elbow should be feel like elbowing somebody behind you, right? About trophy pose, uh, we can discuss more in a future video. But from the trophy pose until the contact point, what should happen? How can you achieve a fluid motion? That's what we'll discuss today. I found many online lessons that talks about the various steps in the surf, like how to toss, how to load, trophy pose, and uh, leg drive, and pronation, and finish, etc. But surprisingly, not many videos talk in detail about how to actually hit the ball from trophy pose to the contact point. Uh, some would simply say shoulder over shoulder. Some say leg drive. And that's it. But to me, this part seems to be the most crucial part that is very confusing to many recreational players. Now, now let's do a simple test to see if you can have a fluid motion. Let's just start from the trophy pose. And can you toss the ball and hit the ball in one fluid motion without any hiccups? like this. So start from the trophy pose, toss the ball, and draw an arc of the racket behind your head, and hit the ball in one single motion, like this. Based on my observation, many recreational players struggle with this. It's, the difficulty mainly comes from timing, and the coordination that I discussed. There are several common mistakes when players trying to execute this motion. One problem is some player would preset the racket in the racket drop position, comes to a complete stop, and then restart from that position. So your arm is stuck at some point. Another issue is some player will shake their racket around the head and then hit the ball. And that will lead to problems as well because it's not one fluid motion. And another very common issue is when the player doesn't have a deep racket drop. We know that we need a deep racket drop, something like this.
But some people will have a shallow racket drop. Their arm will stuck some way like this and then hit the ball. Well, another issue some players have is the weight of trade issue. Um, this is something that can you can have in conjunction with other problems. Some players would have a continental grip, but will turn into a way to trade too early. So they will hit the ball like that. Now today we will not address the way to trade issue. Today we will focus on the motion. This has a lot to do with the racket head drop as well, but I don't want to overemphasize racket head drop for recreational players. There are two reasons. First, it's infeasible for many players. Not many people can have extremely deep racket drop like a jock uh, We certainly don't have that flexibility and it could injure yourself. And second, it's not very necessary. In my mind, for many recreational players, as long as you have a fluid of motion, you have the correct sequence of kinetic chain, you will have a great serve. So do not try to pursue a very extreme deep racket drop. Uh, if you do that, some people would deliberately put the racket behind the head on purpose. That will actually defeat the whole purpose of racket head drop. It's just like the forehand, the leg. Right? So the leg is not formed because you put the racket in the leg position, but it's just an unconscious byproduct by your leg push and the turning of your body. Right? So you will have a muscle stretch shortening cycle and that will have uh, power. The same thing for serve. If you want to have effortless power, you should really focus on pushing through your leg and your hip and your chest and naturally you will have a good, nice racket head drop. So don't pay too much attention to deep racket head drop. So how can we get a fluid motion? Uh, what are the drills to help us? I've seen some very helpful tips online. For example, one coach has this tip where you toss the ball and then you try to use the elbow to hit the ball like this. That is certainly a very useful drill for you to get the feeling of uh, leg push and racket drop. Uh, only one issue I found is that your arm will get stuck. If you have the purpose of hitting the ball with your elbow, uh, you don't get the training for timing of hitting the ball at the contact point. Nevertheless, it's a very useful drill. I would recommend it. Now I will add a few more drills uh, to help you achieve a fluid motion. The first drill is just shadow swing. Right? So just start from your trophy pose and then shadow swing the fluid motion. But there's one thing you have to pay attention to, which is have a loose grip. Okay? Don't hold the racket too tightly. You need to feel the racket head weight. One thing that could help you is actually have this wrist form called UNO deviation. So this is UNO deviation where the racket drops a little bit under your wrist. So the benefit of UNO deviation is that you can feel the racket head weight more. So start from the UNO deviation in the trophy face and then you push your leg and turn your body, turn your shoulder. So notice how when I do this, the, my right foot actually pivots. Right? The toe of my right foot will turn from sideways to pointing to the front. You must notice that I'm not doing this by my hand, rather it's all the force comes from leg pushing off the ground until I achieve this pose. So the next drill is 
you toss the ball, you do a half serve, but without hitting. Okay, so you just stop when you achieve this pre-stretched position. So you repeat doing this a few times, and then you actually hit the ball once. That will give you feedback on timing. So this drill will give you a checkpoint. So every time you need to check, you did push off the ground and achieve this pre-stretched position. Like this. So hold a couple of times, and then you could hit once. Oops, that one did not go in. Try again. There you go. So, in my experience, it helps a lot if you can have this fluid motion from trophy pose to contact point. Uh, you can do this practice without thinking too much about first serve or second serve. You can do it like in flat serve or uh, uh, do a slice serve. As long as it's one fluid motion, it's okay. So I could do a slice serve. Uh, let me try a slice serve. And uh, again, we do a few half shot and then eventually hit the ball. So one, hold it. Two, hold it. And three, hit. So that's a slice serve. So this drill will really help you to feel the leg push and the pre-stretch of the muscle. So I have to point out one common problem, which is whenever your wrist or your hand tense up, it will break the rhythm. It will interrupt your fluid motion. Okay. See, this is like a one big loop around your head. Whenever you squeeze the racket really hard, or whenever your wrist is activated, you no longer have a fluid motion. And you can try this, okay? Whenever you're nervous or you hold your racket too tightly or activate your wrist, then your whole muscle becomes very stiff and you no longer have a fluid motion. You can only hit the ball in a very stiff fashion. Like that. Therefore, we must keep our wrist loose throughout the whole shot. The wrist is fired very late during the surf. So we can think about throwing a ball, right? So when we throw a ball, we would also use our big muscle like our legs and our core muscle. We only use the hand when we release the ball. During the whole process, it's the big muscle that's working. Only at the very last second, where you actually use your hand or your wrist. The so same thing for serve. So when you serve, you should really focusing on using your big muscles. Even at this phase, you are using your tricep and bicep to lift the racket. Only at the very last split second, you use your hand your wrist. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. So we today we talked about a very crucial part of surf, which is from the trophy phase, how to hit the ball in a one fluid motion. Of course, there are many other parts you can work on, like the loading, your trophy pose, and pronation, and finish, etc. But I believe this part is a very key part during a surf. Practice a lot and get this part right and it will improve your surf tremendously. Thank you guys so much. I hope to see you next time.